Happy Indigenous Peoples Day! Askawi Kwasin, Winnie Kizug, Natuzaliska Tampanisha. Hi everyone, my name is Dawn Spears. I am a Narragansett from Rhode Island. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to share with you a Cornhusk doll making demonstration from our home. And joining me today? Yat A. Askawi Kwasin. Hi, I'm Najoni Spears. Yat A. Shea and Donna Spears in your ship. Hi everyone, I'm in Donna Spears. So my daughter and my granddaughter, my daughter Cody and my do my granddaughter Awepin are joining us. So before we dive into doll making, I wanted to share a little background. I've been making dolls for 30 years and I make very simple dolls or I make very fancy dolls like this one which has 13 0 beads on it. It's a wool skirt with calico top. She is holding her baby. And this is my Northeast Woodland doll. And she has actually been in quite a few exhibits and I think I made her about 10 years ago. This doll I made for Najoni Jean here. Um, I believe I made it for her first Christmas or First Christmas, I think, and um, I, I made it. It's a toddler doll, so it's it's very strong and able to to withstand fingers like this one. And she's gonna probably be getting one soon too. I feel like it's almost like uh, just something that that I do for for my girls. So here's another doll that I made for another toddler, which I still owe her. Um, this is what you call an unfinished project, but. She's a little bigger, so you can see that over the years I'm I'm getting a little better at it, I guess, of making that toddler doll. And then I have one that is going to be a project doll. She's very big. Let's see. The first thing that you need to do to start making your dolls is to take your corn husks and soak them. You cannot use the dried husks to make a doll. How long should you soak them? What I do is I just run hot water in the sink and I lay the husk in and I just let the water soak right in. Hot water I found works very well. I just get them wet and then I put them in a plastic bag and it's almost like the heat from the hot water also keeps them moist and pliable and I can just work with that material for a while. Um, first thing you need is corn husks and you know you can get corn husks from corn. This is, I brought some fresh corn that you basically peel off these husks and you would let them dry. And what's nice about this, this is a little older piece, but you could actually make a doll right out of this right now. So this I would leave out to dry. What I'm sharing with everyone today is actually something I bought, material I bought. It's um, dried corn husks. So in everyone's kit, you'll have dried corn husks, you'll have pieces of sinew cut to different lengths, and then I also, created some pieces of yarn for hair. So are we ready girls? Mm -hmm. All right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look in our husks and we're going to find, I like looking at the husk and looking at the grain on it and finding a nice piece that I want to use to make the face. So that's the first thing you're doing is you're making this this face on your doll. So that's very nice Jojo. So you need maybe two or three pieces about the same size. So I'm taking two, two husks and I'm gonna put the, the face, the part that I want to be my face, I'm gonna have them go towards each other. So we're gonna take this hair and when you get the hair, it'll have a knot at the top. So you want this knot to go at the same end as the skinny end. So it's gonna go like this, a triangle with the big side down. So when you're using the yarn, there's a knot right here, and you're gonna put your hand on that, and when you wrap the husk around, you're gonna keep your hand on that knot, so you're making sure that you tie underneath it. And you close it up, and then you do the same thing and wrap it go in the opposite direction 
So what you're doing is you're putting your hair in the center. And then you're gonna take one of your pieces of string and I would take the medi a medium sized piece, tie it really tight. You need to make sure this is really tight because you're creating this, this doll's head. This is actually what's going to hold your doll's hair in place. Now wrap around there. Right here? Mm -hmm. Wrap really tight. Mm -hmm. I do like having everybody here, having all my granddaughters and both my daughters and daughter-in-law, who I also consider a daughter, um, here because it brings us together. But I do think it's an important thing for us to pass down in our family. So while a weepin is, is the youngest right now, she just turned a year, her having this time with us and experiencing this, and she's becoming familiar with the material. The next thing we're going to do is make some arms. And to make arms, I take it and I rip it. So you see three pieces. I flip one up like this and tie that end. So that's what those little pieces in your kit are for. And then you braid this piece. So the end result is going to look like like this yeah. so what's nice about the material is everything that you you create with this size husk mm -hmm. seems like it's just automatically proportionate so you can braid this whole thing and it makes perfect size arms for your doll and you notice that it got a little thin there so I just ripped and I and I evened it back out and I braid it all the way to the end and then tie it off take the hair and we put it right down and we tie secure that hair it's in place so Zozo is doing hers as well she's tying her hair down so you're gonna decide what side is the the face you know so when you got that hair you've you've turned that the head around you've tied it shaped your head made that nice nice round shape head and tie it off well now you've got to decide is this the front or is this the front and I think in my case I am going to say this is the front so now we've gonna we're gonna take our arm we just made and we're going to separate these two husks here and we're going to slide the arm up underneath and now this is where it gets a little tricky because we're going to take two very long pieces and we're going to take one piece and bend it over to the back. Keep your hand on it right here. Keep one finger on it. And then you're going to take a piece from the back and go over to the front slide it over as well <laughs> so you're going to just move these husks around kind of make a robe you're going to take a piece of your string sinew and you're going to wrap it right around and tie it really tight mm -hmm. so one goes to the front one comes from the back and goes over. So you see that crisscross over? It doesn't wrap around like a shawl. It, it goes down to the back. Okay, now go ahead and wrap that right around and then tie it tight. You want to finish your doll? Look at your doll. Okay. So again, just to show this, this step, we pull the arm up underneath, take one husk from the back, bend it to the front, and then take the husk from the front and bend it to the back. Keeping your hand on it, you get it all set up, and then you put, this, then put your um, sinew around it.
And if you want to, you can add a belt. I need mine a belt. There's your doll. So here are our finished dolls. And Najoni's has a little smartweed flower in hers. Any thoughts, Najoni, that you want to share? I really liked uh, making these dolls. It was really fun. My favorite part was making a little, um, like the little, what was it called? Shoulders. Shoulders, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I made I made little bunnies one Easter for all my grandchildren. Thank you for joining us. And happy Indigenous Peoples Day. So just to share a couple of dolls that I've made. Um, this doll I made for my granddaughter, Najoni, and I made it, I guess, so she's nine now, so this was about eight years ago, or eight, so I mean about seven years ago, um, and I, this style of doll is representative of our eastern woodland culture, uh, so it has a wool, kind of the wool skirt with a calico top, and I... I used large beads, but I also was limiting how many beads I put on here because I didn't want any choking hazards. And then this doll is one that I did similar dress. Well, you see most of them are actually like this. They're dressed in the, our, our eastern woodland style. But um, so just, just to show, she's, she's got a wool skirt on again. I, I put some sequins on to give the look of brooches. And then I use very tiny beads, tried to keep things um, in perspective. This one I did do the beaded cuffs, and she has a nice um, bandolier bag, and she's holding a baby. I did this one representing motherhood and moms, and just, I don't know, I always feel like I have to kind of rep represent us, our females. And then um, this is another doll that I did that's also a child's doll. The child dolls are made a little sturdier. They have very thick legs and a very thick body and, and I make them so that it's okay for toddler's hands to handle them. So something else I wanted to share that I've been doing is I've been photographing the dolls that I make and so I just wanted to share um, these cards. I make cards now with the pictures. I make dolls every year, usually the two main season I think are spring and fall. Saquon and, and fall, which is Taquanic. I, I feel like those two, those are the two main seasons where you really see the shift in our landscape. And so I'll, I'll dye the hus. And so that's what this picture is really showing, the colors of the hus and the dolls and then I, I bring them outside and I photograph them and what's really interesting is that these dolls when you're photographing them you almost see them take on a personality and I don't know I just I love I love what comes through and and the connection that even is there you know as I make them they're mine they're they come from me I make them and so I I like to share that that when you're working with the material and you're making your doll, you know, think about that. You know, as you as you form it and you make that face come through, it almost speaks to you as to what and how you're going to dress it and and who she's going to become. And I say she, but you know, sometimes you can make boy doll too. So, but I I feel like for the most part, I make mostly female dolls and. So I say, you'll see that personality come through. And so sometimes, yes, I'll see that face come through and I'll be like, yep, this is a little boy. So then I'll dress him accordingly. Stay tuned and, you know, follow me and you can see what I'm doing. I have a lot of um, contemporary work happening with the dolls as well. And so, thank you. Katapatash. <laughs>